Hi everyone, welcome back to Workshop and it's part two of the second HP 34401A repair. In part one you saw me uh, strip the meter down and replace some of the uh, electrolytic capacitors and also I try and identify the main problem which was that the display was just all segments on and it appeared as though the processor on the main part of the board wasn't running. And you also saw me chase down some faulty components as they happened on the board. I had some Zener diodes go, I had some tantalum capacitors go. So we're going to press on with part two. I've just had a delivery of some components here, uh, some Zener diodes, some tantalum capacitors and a couple of op amps as well. So I'm going to take time out before I get back into the troubleshooting and I'm going to replace uh, some of the tantalum capacitors, the Zener diodes that I had previously replaced with uh, temporary packages. Uh, I've got the right ones for the job now so I'm going to fit them and I'm also going to fit the op amp that I pulled at the very end of the part one video that I identified it looked like it was causing uh, one of the negative 15 volt supplies to be pulled down to about minus nine so I've got a replacement op amp so we're going to try fitting that and see if we can get back to a nice steady state with uh, some nice new components ready to crack on with the original repair. So first things first I'm going to replace a few of the tantalum capacitors these 22 microfarad 20 volt capacitors some of them are running on minus or plus 15 volt rails and it really is a little bit too close to the maximum uh, voltage spec of the tantalum capacitors and I'm not surprised one of them went short circuit when it was exposed to minus 18 volts and probably was spiking in and around there and it rendered it dead short so let me go away and replace some of those tantalum capacitors now and whilst I'm at it I'll replace some of the zeners as well. Okay, I've replaced four of the tantalum capacitors. I've replaced them with 22 microfarad 35 volt capacitors instead of the original 20 volt, just to give that little bit of extra headroom on the voltage side of things. So hopefully that might help going forward into the future. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this uh, LF356 here that I removed that uh, was uh, pulled from this part of the board here. I've got a new one to go back in its place and then we're going to power it up and see if I'm still getting uh, the correct uh, supply voltage to that IC without it being pulled down. So let me go away and uh, fit the new one now. Okay, that's new op amp fitted, so let's go and check and see if I'm getting a good negative supply. And it should be here on the Zener diode, the new Zener diode, so that's minus 14.7. That's spot on, because it was an 18 volt dead supply, and 3.3 uh, off of that, 14.7 volts. Perfect. Okay, now that I've got the board at a nice steady state again, it's time to look at the microcontroller and the gate array. Now I know I said in the previous video it was an ASIC uh, because that's what the schematic says. I didn't pay too much attention to the actual part number and apparently it's a gate array, but there we go. But anyway, I want to try and get the microcontroller up and running and I've been round a few of the pins and I've checked the obvious. It is getting a good clock, it is getting a good 12 meg clock from the oscillator here. Um, it's got a good supply. Uh, things like the NMI, the non-maskable interrupt, is not tied high, which would send it into a loop. In fact, that pin's tied permanently and low because it's not actually used. I've checked some of the other pins in and around it that it's uh, set up to use uh, the external ROM and not the internal. Again, that EA pin is tied permanently low, which means it's selected to use an external ROM. So I'm going to take a chance based on what I found with the uh, HP Agilent power supplies that I previously repaired and they have on an almost identical circuit here. The same microcontroller, the same gate array, the same RAM and the same ROM. So they've obviously shared the design between the various HP products. So I'm going to take a chance and uh, replace the actual SRAM IC here. Um, in the past I've come across microprocessor boards where that is faulty. 
out of the four, it's probably the one that's the weakest in terms of ESD, etc. And it's most easily blown. So I'm going to take a chance that possibly that one's got a problem and I'm just going to replace it. I've got a batch of uh, new SRAMs that I collected when I was doing the HP power supplies. So I've got it in stock. So let's go ahead and replace that RAM chip and see what happens from there. Okay, let's get the heat gun on this IC and get it removed. I'm not going to use any flux in this particular IC. It uh, should come off easy enough. And if you haven't done this before, the technique that I use with the heat gun is not to heat up the legs directly, it's to heat up the package just where the legs go into the body of the actual chip. What that does is it puts less heat into the actual PCB and uh, with some bulk heat inside the chip you've got more chance of keeping the solder wet on both sides of the chip when you move from one side to another. And also uh, Please avoid the temptation of trying to lever up the IC before it's actually fully uh, wetted on all the pins. You risk the chance then of uh, lifting pads off the board. Not easy to do when I'm videoing but uh, we're giving it a go. And there we go. Chip removed. Okay, that's the new SRAM fitted. I did have one or two spare from the HP Power Supply repair, so brilliant. And uh, it's a different part number, but most of these uh, RAMs are that size, 256 by 8 in that package. They're all very, very similar. And as long as you pick one that's uh, fast enough for the board, then it's uh, it, you've got a good chance of it working. It's a standard pinout. But anyway, let me reach over and just plug in the AC here to the Power Supply. And let's just power it up and see what happens. Oh, and we got a beep from the buzzer. Let's take a look at the display. <laughs> we've got life. And we've even got an input working there. Brilliant. Wow, so let's reset that again. And power it up. Yes! And do we have a front panel by any chance? We do indeed. And I can hear the relays clicking on the board there as I change the modes. It's picking up 50 hertz. Obviously there's no input but it's picking up 50 hertz from the air. Brilliant. So let me very quickly Let's just shove in uh, a voltage here and just see if we're getting anything uh, resembling calibration there. Let's turn it off this now. I'll come back when I've got a voltage source hooked up. Okay, I've got PDVS2 mini hooked up. Just been powered on, so it's nothing like warmed up. But I think it's worth a go. So let's uh, power it up again. <laughs> Look at that! More or less spot on 10 volts, bar one count. Brilliant. Okay, so what's next? Well, I do actually have one more tantalum capacitor to change out, which is down between the two electrolytics there, or the three electrolytics. And I do need to actually half remove this one here to, in order to get in there to change that one. But again, that's another 22 microfarad. 20 volt one which are all placed with the 35 volt one. I do want to change that and I think I need to give the board a little bit of a clean around the SRAM, uh, around the Zener diodes etc and the IC that are replaced over here. And then I'm going to give GPIB a wee test. I'll do that off camera because it's just a very very quick test just to make that sure that's uh, working okay. 
I don't want to fall at the same trap that I did with the last 34401A where I actually boxed the meter back up only to find that one of the chips would, is gone on the GPIB section. So I'll give that a quick test. If it's faulty, I'll be coming back and we'll see what we can do to repair that. Failing that, I think we're ready to box this thing back up uh, into its chassis here, put the PCB back up. And there we go, that's it back together again. I did indeed check GPIB before I put it back in its case and it is working no problem at all. So I've just assembled it, so I'm just going to put power into it again to make sure it's working. But I just thought I'd show you on the workbench here. Here's the parts that are replaced. An op amp, yes, that was probably dodgy. Uh, pulling too much current, uh, the RAM was definitely dodgy. The 5 volt regulator, the 2925, well, it looks like there was nothing wrong with that. It was uh, down to the SRAM that was causing the microcontroller to do some weird things. And of course, all the tantalum capacitors and uh, some of the 3.3 Zener diodes there that were replaced. So, nothing left to do but uh, put power into it and let's see if it's working. There we go, get the mains lead. Make sure all the switches are in the off position, etc. And I've got all the cables plugged in. And let's put power on. Yeah, there we go. We've got a display. The only thing I need to do now is actually clean up the display. It's very, very dirty, this meter. Uh, it looks like it's going to need the IPA on it, etc. And give it a good soapy wash, possibly or to get rid of some of this uh, gunk that's leftover residue from stickers there and uh, just give it a good old clean and the same with the actual case itself the cover itself needs a good old clean um, the display is a little bit dim I do actually have another one because I bought two um, one was used in the previous 34401A but I do actually have another one but whether I use it on this meter I don't know I want to compare the brightness of this display with the, the original 34401A uh, compare a good display, a new display with uh, this display and let's see how much dimmer it really is. It's maybe not worth changing yet because it, it does look dimmer on camera because I do have a light shining on it. But uh, that's it all back together. I did change out one or two other tantalum capacitors that I was able to get access to um, when I removed the tie wrap here on the display cable, etc. So I think we're good to go in terms of caps. And uh, I'll probably hang on to this one, although I say that with every uh, instrument I uh, repair, but I'll probably hang on to this one given the condition of it and I'll probably put the other one uh, on eBay, something like that, and maybe sell it at a nice uh, knockdown price for somebody, maybe get them started in the bench DMM game. Thanks for watching.